Okay, and we live. Going to do a short stream building Yarok today. Supposedly, I'm scheduled to be there at three. We'll see if that changes or not with the way they've been adjusting hours all over the place. But I kind of like to go in later today. Um, live right on the edge of a town that's doing its uh, St. Patrick's Day parade a bit early. Uh, because all the towns around here celebrate St. Patrick's Day. We're on the Jersey Shore, so... The bars love a good excuse to celebrate and encourage people to come drinking, so... <clears throat> so we were... We ended on Savior, so apparently we're starting Scars of Mirrodin, which means we're going over making sure there isn't anything else from the set that's worth including now that we've seen most of the cards we're going to add to the deck. <clears throat> so, I guess we should go see what actually is on our list. Yeah, you might be able to hear a lot of the background noise too, as the fire trucks and ambulances and whatnot go rolling past. So uh, we had Blight Mamba as the first card. X proof, that thing has Intimidate. Black Leaf Goblins, a four drop. Blight Mamba. Artifacts Demon. We didn't bother with Carrion Call. It's a four mana instant that makes two 1-1 one, one infect creatures. We have Clasp and Engine, I believe. Contagious Nim. So we didn't take the... Or we put the Sabertooth Cobra on the list because it can inflict two poison counters by itself. But the Contagious Nim just does that automatically on connection. The same reason we put the Rot Wolf onto the list, so maybe we need to give Contagious Nim a shot. <clears throat> yes. Maybe not. Maybe we won't wind up running any of these. And this is a Phyrexian Zombie. Corpse Cur was already on the list since it gets back other infect creatures. And Sisbear just has better stats than either the Wolf, the Cobra, or the um, one we just put on the Nim. So. Eh. All one word. This is a Phyrexian Beast, or a Phyrexian... Yep, Phyrexian Beast, so... Green... Phyrexian Beast... Two, three. Maybe we'll wind up cutting all of these, whereas right now I'm adding them to try and get more um, Infect and Toxic creatures in the deck. <clears throat> we might actually wind up cutting them because they're so small. And we just need the bigger ones or the more evasive ones. Sorry, and all of those flesh allergy. No, no. So the Praetors is already on the list, Icar Rats is on the list. Icar Claw Mirror is not, because it's a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. Even if it becomes a 3-3 three, three when it gets blocked, it's still not anything remotely impressive. Neither are the other ones, which is why I think we might wind up cutting them again later on. But we might just need some curve filler that can inflict poison damage on the opponent's Like, there's only so many 2-mana... Uh, flying creatures 
that inflict poison counters that we can run, and Blighted Agent being unblockable. And Death Mantle was already on the list. Our Plague Stinger. Not running Putrefax. Yeah, it inflicts five poison if it hits, but it can only hit the one player. It's five mana, and then it dies. Like, it's just not good in Commander at all without ways to keep bringing it back or blinking it so it doesn't die. And the blink effects ha have to happen before its trigger can go on the stack, otherwise not helping anything. Also, I don't even know if it's one of those ones that dies at the end of each turn or if it's just your turn. Yeah, it dies at the end of each turn. So. Nothing. Nothing to be done with it. Skittles. Definitely on the list. Yeah, I just don't see Tainted Strike working in the deck. Like, it targets a creature, so it works with Rot Priest. It gives infect to the toxic creatures and the poisonous creatures and whatnot. And it's still not good. Like... It, it works with all the cards and does the thing, and it's still not good because it's just a one-shot thing. We have the Trigon of Infestation. Yeah, note of Vector Asp. And Worm Coil Engine. Okay. Yeah, that was all of the fun options we had for Scars. Alright, so after Scars... After Scars, come on. Come on, Magic. Come on, Gather, you can do it. Gonna make me scroll all the way down manually? Like, well, what did I do to you that you are going to do this to me now? Scourge. See? Not that difficult. Would have been even faster for you. <clears throat> plus two, plus two for each other creature on the battlefield that shares a creature type with it. I mean, if we have enough creatures on the battlefield, they are all Phyrexians. <laughs> that is a huge power and toughness boost. To one of our infect creatures, in theory. Still not gonna run it, but... No. Not enough actual zombies in our deck. There are some, but... Despite the fact that most Phyrexians are cobbled together corpses and machine parts, they are neither consistently artifacts nor consistently zombies. So, instead, the Phyrexian creature type encompasses all of that. Do we want Decree of Pain? I mean,. Maybe. Usually makes my short list. Although it does kill all of our stuff when we cycle it. Like, most of our creatures are smaller than average. So maybe this isn't a good Decree of Pain deck. Usually I like Decree of Pain because you can cycle it to kill, like, token creatures. Or if somebody's on a theme, like goblins or elves or something, you might be able to kill all of their creatures if they don't have enough lords out just by cycling it, but yeah, most of our stuff actually does die to a cycled Decree of Pain, so maybe not. Might be the rare deck that runs black where I'm just like, nah, I don't think Decree of Pain's where I want to be at.
Lethal Vapors. Lethal Vapors is a card that I love when it when the deck works with it, when you have a low creature count. And I like I use it in a Super Friends Planeswalker deck because as long as I have creatures to block with already, you cast Lethal Vapors and then your Planeswalkers are safe because nobody can put new creatures into play and then somebody has to skip their turn. And the Planeswalker deck loves surviving another turn cycle with all of its Planeswalkers in play. So... for a basic land card and put into your hand storm uh temple tendrils listed a bomb speakable symbol vengeful dead nope okay against trample till end of turn So that was Scourge. Oh, we we want to work now. Uh, seventh edition Shadowmore. Top five cards. If you control more creatures than each other player, put two into your hand. Otherwise, put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom. Comes black and gains fear, draw a card. I search my library for a card less than or equal to the number of lands I control. <clears throat> and whenever a creature dies, if it had a minus one, minus one counter on it, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Yeah. It has this ability. Probably not. Also, it's fairly small on its own to begin with, so. Red or green put on top of its owner's library instead. Nope. Black creatures have wither, unnecessary. First catcher. Whenever a blue creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may have, have target player draw a card. Whenever a black creature enters the battlefield, you may have target player discard a card. Eh. Probably not. Put a green creature from our hand into play. The number of cards target opponent discarded this turn. Draw a card for each minus one, minus one counter on. Elsewhere Flask, Fairy Macabre. Alright, Farhaven Elf is another green ramp creature. So. Uh, oh no, not Shadow, Shadow more. There we go. The Far Haven Elf. Elf Scout, Elf Warrior, Elf Druid. Elf Druid. <clears throat> uh, all counters from target creature onto another target creature. Put on a creature, you may create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. <coughs> uh, deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals their hand, you choose a card from it, that player exiles that card. 
Start a card, destroy target artifact or enchantment at sorcery speed. <clears throat> Buffs blue and black creatures. This new blue spell one one black spell gains fear. <clears throat> this creature deals damage to opponent. That player discards a card. Nope. Blight can't block and can't be blocked. All right, so here is the Ink Fathom Witch because this is the set that she actually debuted in. So she's a one-one with fear, <clears throat> and for four mana, each unblocked creature has base power and toughness four one until end of turn. Huh? I never realized that didn't just affect your creatures. So you can technically activate her if you're about to get hit by, like, an Eldrazi Titan or some giant dragon or something and only take four damage from it for four mana. <clears throat> Hello, Pika Jania. And welcome to the stream. I'm doing all right. Got... Bit a bit of a cough, but that's only from just having eaten lunch. How are you doing today? <clears throat> uh, do we want Ink Fathom Witch to try and make these smaller infect creatures bigger? Possibly, most of them are not above four power to begin with. We can at least add her to the list. <clears throat> this is Ink Fathom Witch. And she is one in hybrid blue. Our folk wizard. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And yeah, I've been playing Magic since before a lot of people that play Magic now were around to be playing Magic. Like, years ago we had a joke, because I used to play a lot of other card games, and when Yu-Gi-Oh! first broke out on the scene... Uh, there used to be a father and son that came to play at the one place that I was at, and we realized that I had sleeves on one of my deck older than his kid, <clears throat> and that was always kind of amusing. Uh, I miss super old Ultra Pros back when they had the Jester um, icon on the box. Those things used to be virtually indestructible, and... Nowadays, then again, I haven't used Ultra Pros. Maybe they've gotten better over the years. <clears throat> nah, now I've been single all of my life and not super interested in having kids, so <clears throat> never been a goal of mine to find somebody, settle down, and have a family. Wither, beginning your upkeep. Yeah, there's the Midnight Banshee, and I don't think she's going to make it. Oh, absolutely. Um, I played Magic. So my brother is like 10 years younger than me, and... I used to take him with me to tournaments. He actually learned how to play before he could read. 
and just memorized what the cards did, as most small children seem to be able to just absorb every bit of information. So I would absolutely, if I had kids and they were at all interested in going with me, I would take them to play Magic. <clears throat> yeah, while I'm not super interested in having kids, I would, like, if I had ever been in the position, like, if they weren't into Magic, not only would I not make them go, I would want to show more interest in what they were interested in, but if they were at all interested in Magic, I would love to take them with me and have them be there with me when we play Magic and play Magic with them, so. <clears throat> uh, Una just makes one one, so really need her. Life I gain two life, make elves. No. Nope. Put away. <clears throat> so, do you have any kids, then, Pika? Like, <clears throat> you play magic with them if you do, or is this just? Curious hypotheticals at this point. <clears throat> Save for the moment, no. And tap, and they can put a minus one, minus one counter on it. Nope. Opponent lost three or more life. Nope. <clears throat> Might not even deal damage to them. Torture, tower above, is plus four, plus four, trample, wither, and target creature blocks. Nope. <clears throat> Poor crawler, wing rattle. Ah, Woodfall Primus. Right. Okay, Woodfall Primus. Come get my deck where I double. Comes into play abilities. Need you to destroy things for me. Five triple green. Yeah. <clears throat> Tree folk, six six. Oh, he's a tree folk shaman. Not uh, remember that about him. It's <clears throat> back over. Shadowmore's done. Next up is shards of. Oh no, shadows over Innistrad. Almost. Almost missed it. <clears throat> no. 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 Can't be countered. Have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature except it enters with additional X11 counters. I think I like my other large clones more. For what we're doing. Lifelink. Guards a car five a zombie. Nope. Nope. They're black. Death touch on delirium. Yeah, still probably not. <clears throat> Equestrian skill, all ever after. I 
under the floorboards. No. Breath mold. Yeah, that's good. Um, what other card games have you played? Because I used to play a lot of other card games too, because I liked Magic. But there was a there was a point in time where there were not a lot of Magic players in my area. Um, towards the end of like Onslaught Block, and I also had interest in other card games, so I would occasionally dip into other things. I played the Decipher Star Wars card game pretty heavily, and the score, the first score Dragon Ball Z card game. Um, and then I played a little bit in like various other card games. Um, played the X-Files one for like a couple months, played the Inuyasha one for a couple months, mostly because there were a lot of players for that one and the rules were super simple. Um, and I did one of their pre-release events just because there was nothing else going on that day and opened the one-per-case version of Inuyasha from that set, and everybody else was kind of upset because they wanted that one specifically. Did play Pokemon. Uh, played Pokemon from base set one up through the beginning of the gold and silver sets. Like, I got through the gym leaders and got up to, like, the first few sets with the unknowns, and that's where I stopped. I uh, never got into Hearthstone, though. <clears throat> yeah, I'm... Hearthstone, every time I saw people playing it, I was like, eh, I might be... Um, yeah, I might be interested in that, but I'd rather just play Arena at that point if I was gonna get into it. Oh yeah, no, I played, like, most of the major collectible card games at some point in time just because I like playing card games. So, yeah, I started with Base Set 1, and like I said, I made it up through the first couple gold and silver sets before I stopped playing. X four more make a three three net. Plus two until end of turn. No. Draw a card. Bounce a creature. Opponent casts their first spell each turn. Counter that spell. Eh, probably not. Sorry, Jace. Don't think you're what I'm looking for. Mind glass, drive, mind rack, demon. Do I tap creature? No. Counter target creature. No. Uh, that's, yeah. yeah, that's fair. I can see that. Most card games get very, very different over time. Like, Magic still has a lot of the stuff it had back then, but the uh, philosophy on card design and everything has changed so much, and then the rules shifted two times, like major rule shifts, so it's it's still recognizable as what it was, but only barely. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh, when I look at it now, compared to when I stopped playing, just looks like a completely different game with only a handful of the same pieces still running around. And I have, like, 
there are some things about Pokemon I know that have changed because I stopped playing before even the um. What were the ones that gave double prizes when they died? I forget now, but they they hadn't even been introduced yet, and then the all the um various um regional variants and evolutions started getting added into the game, but so those those are all different rules that I wouldn't be able to grasp right now. But yeah, most card games, if they survive long enough, they have to keep adding new stuff and if you don't stay current on them you go away for a little bit and come back and they look like so different compared to what they were Kirk his journal no Gitrog no For basic land card, put in your hand for four more card types, you can get a creature land. Eh, probably not. We don't really put different card types in our graveyard that effectively for this deck, so I don't think we need a basic land tutor for one mana. Ah, and that was it. Eight shadows. Now we can move on to shards. There we go. Uh, you may lose life equal to its mana value. You can repeat this process any number of times. Hmm. Pain Wasp, Archdemon. Minus one, no. Whoops, Connoisseur. Guards every turn. How many zombies do I have? We have six right now. Contagious Nim, Hand of the Praetor, Crusader is a zombie, Avangol Lich, and Micaeus, and the Rot Priest. So two of them aren't even uh, Phyrexians on top of that. The Avangol Lich might not even make the deck. That's a shame. With the giving death touch would work with Finn the Fangbearer, but I thought we'd have more zombies than that. Top four, no. Sorry. A creature from the graveyard. Sorcerer. Nope. Bower, there's a battlefield draw a card for each creature at eight. Guys are too small for these Naya giant creatures matter cards. Don't think we have enough artifacts for Tezzeret. Fifth edge tortoise formation. Yep, okay. 
shards. Next up is Streets of New Capenna, looks like. Oh no, those are all the abbreviations. We gotta do the starter set first. Yep, yeah. okay. Hey, let's see if there's any random card from starter that I've forgotten existed. This is two life, gain two life, no destroy target non black creature. Not really. Portal stuff. Three. First. Uh, Storm Crow, I Morp, Drix. Yep, okay. Now for Streets of New Capenna. Belfair attacks, draw two, then discard a card. That damage mill twice that card. No non token creature you control dies, it connives. The non rogue creature with equal or lesser power from your graveyard to the battlefield. The problem is he's not actually helping the main thing. He has Death Touch, so he works with Finn. And most of our guys are small enough that he can bring them back. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's close. We'll add him to the list at least. Uh, don't have street new capenna, right? Yep, there we go. Body longer. Two black black ogre road. Base three. X damage to target creature or planeswalker where X is the greatest power among creatures you control would die this turn, exile it. Destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, exile target card from a graveyard or gain four life. Yeah, I think we already have enough disenchant creatures. If they had slightly better modes, maybe. Have to see that maybe we want the Titan of Industry just for all the bodies it makes and things it gives. Also, probably not, though, if I'm being honest. Attacks the creature, discards a card, and loses four life. Yeah, still not going to be worth it. Our guys are usually too little for fight rigging. Although it does grow them, so that's kind of neat. I tap treasure, gain two. The scarab. Triomes. Mm 
Ledger Shredder. Nope. Eyes fight. Yep. Kraken. Gallery. Venice Lifelink. Prevail one, except if there are five or more, you can pay two life and draw a card. Yeah, I don't think so. Break down heavy. Swindler, no. All right, so reach trample, choose two. Destroy an artifact or enchantment, gain five life, make a rhino and put a shield counter on a creature. All good abilities and all ultimately not doing anything our deck desperately needs. Again, we have better disenchant creatures, we have better... Well, not better token makers, but we don't really care about a 4-4 four -four if it's not toxic or infect, so... As a creature, any creature on the battlefield, except it gets a shield counter if it was one of ours. Which we would most likely want to copy one of our creatures, but I don't think that's particularly helpful either. Like, having a 1-1 unblockable with a shield counter for 4 mana is not the best thing. Also not the absolute worst thing, so... And we're through the set. Okay. Streets. That should be Alchemy. This should be Commander. Alright. Oh, did I accidentally leave the other set on? Yeah, I did. There we go. There's a battlefield with a 1 1 counter flying, death touch, and shield. Creature enters the battlefield under your control. You may move a counter from toolkit onto that creature and sacrifice it to draw a card. Hmm. Next, choose a counter on a permanent you control. Put a counter of that kind on target permanent you control if it doesn't have a counter of that kind. It. Or life unless they sacrifice a non token. Draw a card for each creature that died under your control this turn. There's a battlefield under your control. It fights up to one target creature you don't control with the same mana value. Only if you control a creature that fought this turn. How much you control, you may put your choice of a 1 1 counter or a counter of that kind on him. Game combat on your turn, become a copy of another target creature until end of turn, except it's a 1-4 and has this creature can't be blocked. Maybe? I mean, most of our creatures are small anyway, so it staying a 1-4 isn't actually to its detriment. Guardianship Raptor, so it'll be right around here. So this is Cephalid Face Taker. Bigger. Doing a blue cephalid rogue. One. 
I have Cephalid Face Taker. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that one working in our deck, just becoming an infect or toxic creature that's unblockable for one. Also, if it copies the higher toxic value creatures, it actually gets in for more poison damage than if it copies the infect creature, so. And we could always copy one of the two creatures that proliferates when it connects for damage, too, like the larger green ones, so. Herder, Custody Lich. Two. The highest mana value among creatures you control. Crew three and scavenge. Two. Say. It will be. Whenever you attack, put a shield counter on target attacking creature until end of turn of games. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, remove a shield counter from it. If you do draw a card, if a creature with a shield counter on it would be dealt damage or destroyed, remove the shield instead. Works better with the infect creatures. And the Death Touch creatures than it does with the Toxic ones. Means we get to draw a card if we connect and put poison counters on them. And if they block it, we don't lose our guy. And we get to usually put minus one, minus one counters on their guy or kill it with Death Touch. Yeah, might work. This is Family's Favor. Singular family possessive. Hey, right. at least consider it. Step you may return another creature you control to owner's hand, but a number of one one counters equal to its power on responder. I'll target instant or sorcery. <laughs> Ah, thank you for the follow, Pika. Casualty 3. Exile target instant or sorcery from opponent's graveyard and copy the card. I think we care about that at all. Put a charge counter on Gavel. Plus one, plus one for each counter. Four more counters on it has double strike. We can proliferate the counters. Goes really well with Infect. Also plays, like, all right with the Toxic, and if we include the Death Touch creatures for Finn. Yeah, okay. Seems like a good equipment in our deck. We'll put it on the list. Uh, gavel of the righteous. This two and it's an artist. Hey, Green Warden. We already passed on. Tax exile up to one card of each card type from defending player's graveyard and it gets counters. You can't creature, planeswalker, or clue. Enchant permanent is colorless clue. Loses all other abilities. Fun, but not quite what we need. Fathom Witch again. Your food tokens equal number of opponents you have. You pay two and sacrifice a token to make a rhino. Invoke, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Each creature that convoked lethal scheme cannot. Go into two piles. 
one of those piles and then they sacrifice everything in the chosen. Death touch, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a hit counter from a card that player owns in exile if you do draw a card and make two treasures. Assassin, Mercenary, and Rogue. Assassin's Trophy. I don't think we have any mercenaries either. So this is gonna be based entirely oop, number of rogues I have. Right now is Grave Robber. Blighted Agent is a rogue. Bridal and Body Launderer and the Face Taker that we just added. Eh. Does not look great for Marie then. This combat damage to a player, it connives or X is the damage it dealt. Oops, for this combat damage to a player, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, make a rogue. If it's a land card, make a treasure, otherwise gain three life. Whenever enchanted creature dies. Put a creature card you own with lesser mana value from your hand or from the command zone onto the battlefield. If you do return next of kin to the battlefield, attach to that creature at the beginning of the next step. Different mana value among cards in your graveyard. Whenever you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. Throne can't be blocked. Combat damage to a player or die. Deals combat damage to a player or dies proliferate. Can't be blocked by smaller creatures. Gets counters on it when it attacks the player with the highest life total. Maybe. We have to at least consider him. Another heals combat damage, he proliferates cards. So. Oh, yeah, I think that's right. So, Park Heights, Efric, two green human soldier, two. The only reason he might not make it is because he's a smaller creature with very limited evasion of his own. Right. Reveal a top card of your library. That player may pay life equal to its mana value. If they do exile that card, otherwise put it into your hand. Yeah, not helping. Fortunately, plus two plus O and trample. Equip creature deals combat damage to a player. Make that many citizens. There's a battlefield. Put a shield counter on target non commander creature you don't control and gain control of it for as long as it has a shield counter. Exile him. Put three time counters on it. Exile up to one target creature and put three time counters on it. Each exiled. Again, suspend. Nope. That's the exile card without paying its mana cost if you do return. Copy it for each kind of counter among permanents you control. You may choose targets. Target non land permanent to owner's. Cast a spell from their hand. You may reveal the top card of your library. If it shares a card type with that spell, counter that spell. The opponent may cast the reveal card. No, 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 no. Sigh. 
exactly three colors has replicate three. I don't think any of our spells that we have right now are all three of our colors at the same time. Other than our commander and replicating it wouldn't really do anything, so. Control gains vigilance, trample, and melee until end of. Draw a card for each player who has dealt combat damage this turn. Go to the way, waste management, wave of rats. Trample dies if it dealt damage to a player this turn. Return it to the battlefield under owner's control and has blitz. Yeah. Sure, Woe Strider, Wood Elves, different artwork. Turn target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, and then cipher. Casualty 2. Each opponent exiles the top card of their library. You may cast spells. Oh, I'll write that thing. Alright, I feel like I got distracted or something because I don't remember seeing the forgery, which I'm pretty sure is in. Yeah, Extravagant Replication. That was the one. In your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of another target non land permanent you control. So really good with the things like Hand of the Praetors or the Rot Priest to double up on the triggers from them. And only kind of mediocre with the regular Toxic and Infect creatures, just giving me another body every turn. Still might be worth it though. And I was thinking about this as I'm going through. It's like, did I not even see that thing? And I just glossed over it, so. Extravagant. Yeah, replication. Replication. It might not actually make the deck, as it's a six mana do nothing enchantment to start off with. So, I could definitely see it not making it into the final cut, but I want to consider it at least. Alright, so that was Streets. Next up is Strixhaven. Oh, go ahead, it's okay, you can search for Strixhaven. Please. Thing. I will allow it. Accomplished Alchemist. One may have any color, X or X is the amount of life you gain this turn. Alright, so there's the access tunnel, which I glossed over for a second, but... Given how small most of our things are... Basically just another Rogue's Passage for most of our creatures, so... Put that one on the list. Four my zero and learn magecraft. Draw a card. Card reveal creature card. Nope. Trampler, don't think so. Pass, pay 10 life, untap all lands I control. Create a fractal. Other pass bats, insects, snakes, and spiders get plus one, plus one. We have a couple of insects. 
we have snakes, but I don't think any of them are, um, like, the one has, is, like, the Saber Fang Cobra. What other snakes do we have? Yeah, we have the Saber Tooth Cobra. Light Mamba. Okay, so it's literally those two and Hapatra makes snake tokens, but... They don't have anything relevant. Um, insects. We have a couple. Uh, skull dwellers, an insect. Siphoners, an insect. Hornet queen, but that's not helping much. Swamp mosquito isn't helping much. Uh, plague stinger, the trigons tokens, the swarm lord, and the swarm lord's tokens. What's the search for blacks on the back? Top five cards of your library. Put any number of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose three life for each card put into your hand this way. Eh. It helps that the insects are mostly infect creatures. Makes me want to consider it a little bit. Probably not, though. I'd probably just rather have other toxic or infect creatures. Maybe if Blex himself had Death Touch instead of the Gain 4 life, so that way he'd work with uh, Finn also. Then I'd consider him. There's a battlefield. Choose one. Make a pest. Draw a card and gain a life or exile a player's graveyard. Little tempting with the value for Yarok. Still probably not, though. Lose two life, draw two cards. Non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Permanent destroyed in this way. We discards a card, you draw a card and gain two life. Graveyard to your Might start a creature you don't control or counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays three. Sacrifice creatures four. Copy target creature spell you control except it isn't legendary if the spell is legendary. Very entertaining for our commander. Eh, only medium for almost all of our other stuff, though. Four creature cards with different names that each have mana value X or less and reveal them. Opponent chooses two. Shuffle the chosen cards into your library and put the rest on the battlefield and exile appreciation. No. Oh. Or put it on the battlefield tap. That land becomes a fractal. It's a 1 1 counter for every land I played this turn. Nope. <laughs> uh, so let's see. It's 4 mana to double it. Then six mana to double it, then double it. That'd be four on a lot of our difficult to block in fact creatures. So So at eight mana it nearly kills a player if they're unblockable and nothing interacts with them. Yeah, I don't think so. Creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. Uh, 
Star card for each different power. Top card of your library and put a study counter on each of them. Then you may put a card you own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. Gains death touch and has when this creature dies return to the battlefield tapped and I gain two. Top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one rather than its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Other Planeswalker you control has the loyalty abilities of Kazmina, plus two, scry one, minus X, make a fractal. Search your library for an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with this Planeswalker. Exile it, then shuffle. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. So the top card of your library, if it's a land card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, put a study counter on it. Get a zero, zero, green and blue fractal. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it for each different mana value among non-land cards you own in exile with study counters on them. A one, put a one, one counter on each creature you control and those creatures gain trample. It's an under. Enters the battlefield, create a fractal, put X counters on it where X is the number of cards in your hand. Nope. Lifelink. Like this turn, destroy target non land permanent. <sighs> yeah, I, we're never going to gain life, I feel like, with this deck. I don't think there's any life gain inherent in any of my cards, so that's always going to be four mana, and I feel like at that point I'd rather just run Assassin's Trophy and whatnot. A summoning Pestilent Cauldron. Card from your hand, make a 1-1 one, one Pest. Each opponent mills cards equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. Exile four target cards from a single graveyard and draw a card. Poets oh, Quill. Professor Onyx. Yeah, I don't think we need that one either. I may reveal a land card from among them and put it into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Return target creature or planeswalker to owner's hand, counter target artifact or enchantment spell, two 1-1 one -one counters on a creature, shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. Island put on the battlefield shuffle. Turn up to two target creature land and or planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand. Each player gains four life and exile this thing. If it were like lower costed, I'd be a lot more interested in that. Because we don't care about giving the other players four life. I I will take the four life. But spending five mana to get two of our creatures and or planeswalkers back is probably gonna eat up too much of our turn and we won't get to deploy them fast enough, so toughness four four. Battlefield, double the number of 1-1 counters on target creature you control. Attacks, you may have the base power and toughness 
of other creatures you control become equal to this thing's power and toughness until end of turn. A four four. Not entirely opposed. Like I've moved on from him. I'm not entirely opposed to Tanazir because of the same reason as the Ink Fathom Witch. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I can hear a lot of the noises from the parade that's starting to set up, and the microphone is not reacting, so that's a good sign. I don't have to worry about a ton of background noise. Nope. Gradient, no. Bellatane. You cast your copy, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Mills three cards, then you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Minus three, minus one. Loses two life and I gain two life. Nope. Throw land from your hand onto the battlefield. Four tap, draw a card. If you control eight or more lands, draw two cards instead. Well, we made it a little over an hour, and I did say it was going to be a short stream today, and I do have to call it because the parade's going to interfere with me getting to work later today, so I need to be ready to go earlier than normal. So thank you for watching. Thank you again to Pika for stopping by to chat and for following the stream. I appreciate it, and I will see you all next time. Have a good rest of your day.